That's better than nothing, isn't it? <laughs> In a world captivated by fleeting fame and instant gratification, Glynis Johns' journey through a century is a testament to the grace and wisdom that only a life well-lived can offer. From the silver screens of Hollywood's golden age to the dignified tranquility of her centenary, Glynis Johns not only charmed audiences worldwide, but also gathered a lifetime of insights. Today, we delve into the story of this iconic actress who, at the remarkable age of 100, shared reflections filled with humor warmth, and an enduring zest for life. Join us as we uncover the secrets behind her timeless allure and the sage advice she imparted on how to live a fulfilling life. Losing my timing this late. Early Influences and Breakthrough Born in Pretoria, South Africa on October 5, 1923, Glynis Johns was destined for the stage. Her father, Mervyn Johns, was a well-known stage and film actor, and her mother, Alice Maud, was a pianist and accompanist. This artistic household not only provided Glynis with early exposure to the performing arts, but also instilled a deep appreciation for the discipline required in entertainment. Glynis's theatrical debut came unexpectedly at the age of 12 during a family vacation in London. She was spotted by a talent scout who was struck by her poise and charisma leading to her first stage appearance in a production of Bucky's Bears. Her natural ease on stage caught the attention of more than just the audience. Critics, too, praised her performance, noting her as a standout even at such a young age. By the time World War II broke out, Glynis had solidified her place within the British entertainment community. Her career took a significant leap forward with her role in the 1944 film The Halfway House. Her performance as a spirited young woman caught between the ethereal and real worlds showcased her ability to handle complex roles, blending innocence with a biting wit. However, it was the film Miranda in 1948 that truly defined her early career. In this whimsical comedy, Johns played a mischievous mermaid who captivates the very human male leads. Her portrayal of Miranda was both enchanting and humorous, utilizing her skills in comedy to create a character that was both otherworldly and relatable. The role took advantage of her ethereal beauty and her sharp timing, making the film a significant success and a favorite among post-war audiences. Miranda led to a series of similar roles, where Glynis often portrayed charmingly unconventional characters. Her ability to endear herself to audiences while maintaining a layer of mystery made her a highly sought-after actress for roles that required a touch of the fantastical or the eccentric. During this period, Glynis's life off-screen was as vibrant as her film persona. She became a fixture in the London social scene, known for her sharp wit and glamorous style. Her fashion sense, often highlighted in film magazines and tabloids, influenced the post-war British look characterized by bold choices and a flair for the dramatic. In interviews, Glynis often spoke about the influence of her father on her acting style. Mervyn Johns, known for his work both in serious drama and in character roles, taught her the importance of versatility in acting, a lesson she took to heart throughout her career. This foundation allowed her to seamlessly transition between genres, from comedy to drama, without missing a beat. As the 1950s approached, Glynis began setting her sights beyond the British cinema. Her success in Miranda and subsequent films had garnered attention from Hollywood, paving the way for her transition to American films, where she would achieve new heights in her already impressive career. Defining Roles and Performances After establishing herself in British cinema, Glynis Johns transitioned to Hollywood, where her career would flourish further. This move was marked by her first major American film, The Court Jester, 1956, where she starred alongside Danny Kaye. This film, a combination of musical, comedy, and swashbuckler genres, showcased Johns' versatile talents, particularly her ability to hold her own against well-established Hollywood stars. The Court Jester was particularly significant for Johns as it allowed her to display her singing talents, most notably in the duet, Life Could Not Better Be. Life could not better be. Her performance was not only pivotal for her career, but also for the film, which has since become a classic, noted for its clever script and memorable musical numbers. John's portrayal of the feisty and cunning maid Jean provided a strong, intelligent female lead, resonating with audiences and critics alike. 
Following the success of The Court Jester, Johns's career in the United States took off. She was cast in While You Were Sleeping, 1955, a romantic comedy that further established her as a leading lady in Hollywood. Her ability to deliver lines with subtext and her impeccable comedic timing made her a favorite among directors looking for actors who could add depth to lighthearted scripts. However, it was her role as Mrs. Banks in Mary Poppins, 1964, that secured her place in Hollywood history. The character, a suffragette, was portrayed with a blend of dignity and whimsy, mirroring the film's blend of live action and animation. Her performance of Sister Suffragette was both spirited and poignant, capturing the essence of a woman striving for personal and political liberation. This role not only highlighted Johns's singing and acting skills, but also her ability to inspire through her characters. Johns's film roles often challenged the typical perceptions of women at the time, portraying them as multidimensional beings capable of influencing change, both on and off the screen. This was seen in her diverse role selections, which moved between comedy, drama, and musical with ease, showcasing her range and refusing to be typecast. In addition to her film achievements, Johns made significant contributions to television, starring in Glynis, 1963, a sitcom where she played a mystery writer who becomes an amateur detective. This role capitalized on her quick wit and charm and was a perfect fit for her skills in comedy and drama. The show was well received and is remembered for its smart writing and Johns's engaging performance. Throughout her career in America, Johns worked with some of the most renowned directors and actors of the time, from Alfred Hitchcock in The Sundowners, 1960, to her memorable roles in films like Under Milk Wood, 1972, and The Ref, 1994. Her ability to adapt to the evolving landscape of Hollywood cinema kept her relevant and respected in the industry. Stage Triumphs Glynis Johns's impact extended beyond the silver screen into the realm of musical theater, where she left an indelible mark with her Tony Award-winning performance in A Little Night Music. This Stephen Sondheim musical, which debuted on Broadway in 1973, provided Johns with one of her most iconic roles, Desiree Armfelt. In this part, she introduced the world to the song Send in the Clowns, which would become one of Sondheim's most famous pieces. Johns's portrayal of Desiree, a touring actress reflecting on the ironies of her romantic life, was filled with nuance and emotional depth. Her performance not only won her critical acclaim, but also demonstrated her ability to convey complex emotions through song. The role required Johns to blend humor with melancholy, showcasing her range and her skill in interpreting Sondheim's challenging music and lyrics. The success of A Little Night Music was a testament to Johns's talent and her enduring appeal as a performer. It also highlighted her versatility, proving her ability not only to dominate film roles, but to command the stage in a live musical theater setting. Her work in this production would go on to influence future interpretations of the musical and cement her status as a distinguished figure in the world of theatrical arts. Beyond A Little Night Music, Johns continued to embrace a variety of roles in both regional and international theater productions. Her stage career was marked by a continued willingness to explore new and challenging roles, whether in comedies, dramas, or musicals. Her dedication to the craft of acting was evident in her meticulous preparation for each role and her commitment to bringing authenticity to her performances. Johns's stage career was characterized not just by the roles she played, but also by the influence she had on audiences and fellow performers alike. Her presence in a play was often enough to draw crowds, and she was known for her ability to connect with her audience, making each performance a unique and memorable experience. In her later years, Johns occasionally returned to the stage, where she continued to perform with the same vigor and passion that had marked her early days in theater. These performances were often met with enthusiasm from her fans, who appreciated the opportunity to see a seasoned actress embrace her craft with undiminished enthusiasm. Personal Philosophy and Lifestyle Glynis Johns's views on personal life and relationships were shaped by her experiences in a dynamic career spanning several decades. Known for her independent spirit and unconventional choices, Johns often spoke candidly about her views on marriage and relationships. She married three times, each union reflecting the changing phases of her life and career. However, 
Her marriages to Anthony Forwood, David Foster, and Cecil Henderson each ended in divorce, which influenced her increasingly skeptical view of traditional marriage. In a revealing interview from 1981 with The Guardian, Johns remarked, Marriage can be a lovely part of life, but it is not an obligatory part. I have learned that there are many ways to find happiness, and following prescribed societal roles is not always the path. This quote encapsulates her approach to personal relationships, a reflection of her broader belief in living authentically. Regardless of societal expectations, her lifestyle choices extended beyond her views on marriage. Johns was known for her dedication to maintaining a healthy work-life balance, despite the demands of her career. She was an avid gardener, a hobby that provided her with great joy and a peaceful escape from the pressures of the entertainment industry. Gardening was not just a pastime, but a therapeutic activity that she credited with keeping her grounded. Johns also maintained a disciplined regimen for physical and mental health, which included regular exercise and meditation. She believed that maintaining one's health was crucial, not just for longevity, but for sustaining the energy and vitality required for acting. Keeping fit is not just about the physical, but maintaining your energy levels and your passion for life, Johns once shared during an interview with BBC Radio in the late 1990s. Her approach to aging was equally pragmatic and positive. Glynis Johns embraced her advancing years with grace, viewing each decade as a new chapter with its own unique joys and challenges. Age is a fact of life, but your attitude towards it is one of the few things you can control," she explained in a Vanity Fair interview in 2003. This perspective was evident in the roles she chose later in her career, often portraying characters that were complex, vibrant, and defied the typical stereotypes of older women. Johns's philosophy towards life and her career was deeply influenced by her early experiences in the performing arts, where she learned the importance of resilience and adaptability. These principles guided her through various ups and downs, enabling her to navigate the often turbulent waters of Hollywood with poise and dignity. Her personal philosophy and lifestyle offer a blueprint for a fulfilling life both in and out of the spotlight. Glynis Johns' story is not just one of success in the performing arts, but also a testament to living life on one's own terms, with authenticity and courage. Health, Wellness, and Longevity Glynis Johns's remarkable longevity can be attributed to her disciplined approach to health and wellness, which encompassed a variety of practices that she maintained well into her later years. Her commitment to staying active and mentally engaged played a crucial role in her ability to continue working and enjoying life past the typical retirement age in her industry. Johns was an advocate for regular physical activity, which for her included swimming and walking, activities she found enjoyable and sustainable. She often spoke about the importance of staying active, not just for physical health, but also for mental clarity. In an interview with Women's Health magazine in the early 2000s, she noted, Swimming is my fountain of youth. It's gentle on the body, and it energizes the mind. Her diet also played a critical role in her health regimen. Johns followed a predominantly Mediterranean diet, rich in vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and lean proteins. She was known for her love of cooking often preparing meals for herself and her guests. Her approach to food was balanced and mindful, focusing on nourishment rather than restriction. Eating well is an art, she remarked during a cooking show appearance in the late 1980s. It's about colors, flavors, and respecting the ingredients. Mental wellness was equally important to Johns. She practiced meditation and mindfulness regularly, techniques that helped her manage stress and maintain her mental health. These practices were especially important given the pressures of her career in the entertainment industry. Meditation helps me separate who I am from what I do, Johns once explained in a Psychology Today interview, highlighting how these practices helped ground her in a tumultuous industry. Johns also emphasized the importance of social connections and maintaining a vibrant social life, which she believed were key to a happy and long life. She enjoyed a close circle of friends and family with whom she regularly spent time celebrating life's milestones and supporting each other through challenges. Her ability to cultivate and maintain these relationships added to her overall well-being and happiness. Her approach to aging was proactive and positive. Johns accepted aging as an inevitable part of life, but also believed in the power of attitude to influence one's experience of getting older. 
Age should not define you. It's just a number, not a state of mind, she famously said during a television interview celebrating her 90th birthday. This philosophy resonated with many and served as an inspiration for aging gracefully and healthily. Glynis Johns's dedication to health and wellness contributed significantly to her longevity and the quality of life she enjoyed in her later years. Her holistic approach, balancing physical health with mental and emotional well-being, offers valuable lessons on how to live a full and rewarding life regardless of age. Reflections on a Century of Life as Glynis Johns approached and surpassed her centennial year, she offered a unique perspective on both her personal journey and the broader changes she witnessed in the entertainment industry and society. Her reflections during various interviews provided insights into the evolution of cinema, the shifting roles for women in film, and the advancements in technology that transformed how audiences consume media. Having started her career in the era of black and white films and witnessed the rise of digital cinema, Johns was often asked about the technological changes in filmmaking. She expressed a mix of nostalgia and admiration for modern filmmaking techniques. The magic of film has evolved, but the essence of storytelling remains the same, she observed during a film festival panel discussion. She praised the new generation of filmmakers for their innovation and creativity, but also reminded them of the timeless nature of good storytelling. Johns also commented on the significant social changes over the decades, particularly concerning the roles available to women in the film industry. Having played both traditional and progressive roles, she was pleased with the increasingly diverse and complex characters being written for women. We've come a long way since I started acting, Johns noted in an interview for a documentary on women in Hollywood. Today, women are not just the love interest or the side character, they are the leads, the heroes, the villains. It's wonderful to see. Her longevity allowed her to become a witness to and participant in the gradual shift towards more inclusive and representative media. Johns was an advocate for diversity in film, believing that the stories on screen should reflect the richness of the world. Everyone has a story worth telling, she would often say underscoring her belief in the power of diverse narratives to enrich society and the arts. Reflecting on her personal life, Johns often shared that her greatest lessons came from her experiences off the screen. She valued the relationships she built, the challenges she overcame, and the joys she experienced. Each decade taught me something vital, something I could never have learned in a script, she mused during a late-life interview. Her advice to younger generations was to embrace every moment, whether good or bad, as an opportunity for growth. As she looked back on a century of life, Glynis Johns's reflections were filled with gratitude and wisdom. She had seen the best and worst of times both personally and professionally, and from each, she took lessons that she shared generously. Her longevity was not just a testament to her healthy lifestyle, but also to her positive outlook and her ability to adapt to an ever-changing world. Glynis Johns often spoke about the importance of embracing the present and preparing for the future, even as one reflects on the past. This philosophy was not just applicable to her personal life, but also influenced her approach to her career as she aged. Johns believed in continually learning and adapting, regardless of age, seeing each new role and each new era in film as an opportunity to grow as an actress and a person. One significant aspect of her longevity in the entertainment industry was her ability to connect with new audiences. Johns managed to remain relevant by selecting roles that resonated with contemporary viewers, often choosing projects that challenged traditional narratives or introduced new perspectives. This adaptability not only kept her career vibrant, but also ensured she remained a beloved figure across different generations of moviegoers and theater enthusiasts. Johns also engaged with emerging media platforms. She embraced television and voice work, understanding early on that these mediums offered new ways to tell stories and reach audiences. Her participation in various TV shows, movies, and even animated features like Disney's The Emperor's New Groove 2000, where she voiced the character of Isma, allowed her to showcase her versatility and comedic timing to a whole new generation. In reflecting on the changes she had witnessed in the world, Johns often discussed the increasing pace of life and how technology, while beneficial, had also made life more complex. She advocated for taking time to disconnect and find joy in simple pleasures, a walk in nature, a live performance, or a quiet evening with loved ones. Her perspective was that while the world might change, 
The need for human connection and the appreciation of beauty remained constant. Towards the end of her life, Johns focused on giving back to the community that had supported her throughout her career. She was involved in various charitable efforts, particularly those related to the arts and children's education. She believed that her legacy should not only be the films and performances she left behind, but also her contributions to nurturing future talents and supporting the arts as a vital part of community health and happiness. In interviews, Johns would often express her belief that life, much like a good script, is about transformation and evolution. Her own story was a testament to this belief, filled with chapters that ranged from dazzling heights of stardom to quiet moments of introspection and personal growth. Through it all, her spirit of resilience and her unwavering commitment to her craft remained her defining traits.